But the Texas Annual Conference has been engaged in probably one of the most exciting adventures, which was deliver over a million um, long-lasting insecticide-treated nets in an integrated health campaign. And to do it in one week takes a lot of partners. There is a sense of pride and accomplishment that, um, that we made a difference in the world, because we did. <laughs> um, there's a sense of, this is what Jesus did. Jesus healed people. And my net kept a child from getting sick. We were a part of something bigger than we are, and we were a part of something that changed lives for the better. And, oh, by the way, I read about that in the Bible. And it was what Jesus did, and I got to be a part of it. This, um, again, the experience of connecting um, individuals and congregations to this work has part of what's made this so exciting. The, the announcement came from the top down. I mean, we talked about here is an opportunity to send a net, save a life. But to raise a million dollars for net comes from the bottom up. And people just jumped on that. Um, I went to events where there were, mos there were mosquito nets hanging in nearly every church in the Texas Annual Conference. So this is what a net looks like. Um, little children raised money for nets. Um, old people <laughs> raised money for nets. Um, people in between. Um, some folks wrote big checks, some folks wrote little checks. Youth um, had um, basketball games and soccer games and anything with a net game and, and helped raise funds uh, for nothing but nets. And in the space of a year, um, the annual conference had generated um, uh, over just over a million dollars um, for NETS. Uh, and, and then those expanded partnerships with United Nations Foundation and Gates and so on enabled that contribution, which would have purchased 100,000 NETS just by itself, by working with quantity, um, partnering with others, we ended up being able to distribute over a million NETS. That's just extraordinary. It was more than about net distribution. I mean, we wanted this to be about a partnership between the Texas Annual Conference and the Côte d'Ivoire Annual Conference. And so that means it's the creation of relationships. I mean, our partnership team works together regularly by email and then by transatlantic um, phone calls. While we were over there, I actually videoed um, a message to send back to every congregation in the Texas Annual Conference real time uh, while we were doing the net distribution and our team wrote blogs so that they kept connecting back to um, those churches um, who had been so faithful so that every morning when you woke up and you turned on your computer and you logged on, uh, if you wanted to see what we did the day before, there it was and individuals' comments. Uh, in all of that, we start forming friendships and relationships. I mean, you start to build relationships. The Ivorian United Methodist, it is essentially a lay-driven church. Here in the United States, I mean, we're still, um, in my judgment, still a fundamentally clergy-driven church. And so this has been a wonderful kind of bumping up against each other. Uh, I'm, I'm saying we got to learn from this. We struggle in the Texas Annual Conference with new church starts. I mean, we raise thousands of dollars, and, and you know, we spend um, hundreds of hours trying to train pastors to do new church starts. Virtually every church start, maybe every one, that the Ivorians are doing, and they start several new churches every month. Um, it, they're done by lay people. Um, Lay people go out. They work all week long doing their job. They go out on the weekends and they start and they, they do new churches. Often it's a team of people from an existing local church, a team of laypersons, um, who go to a certain area. They start building relationships with people in that area. Do, they'll do a lot of social services and then the next thing you know, one of the laypersons who's called to ministry or feels a call starts a preaching service and the next thing you know, there's a new church start out there. So it's our model turned on its head. And so I think we have a lot to learn. I don't expect us to become like the Ivorian church, but I do expect us to be able to learn from what is happening and maybe to be able to adapt some of that 
to our own context. And what we have attempted to do here, and I think is the key to this, is that there has to be not, we are going to come over and tell you what you need to do to fix this over here. <laughs> Um, and let's talk about what you need, what could be transformational, how could we work together, um, what can we learn from you, and begin to think about it in a relationship of, with a high level of reciprocity. We tend to be insular in how we view the world. We are so bound, not just by U.S. Um, worldview, but even more so at times by we're Texans, we're East Texans, we're members of this, this community within an East Texas town. And certainly those are all good things, but how do we begin to see the world um, from the perspective of others? Uh, and we live in a global world. If this uh, economic downturn has taught us anything, it's how connected we are as in, on this planet. So we're beginning to learn um, about how others, how others see the United States, how others see the United Methodist Church, uh, and to get a sense of, of what it means to be part of a global church. I don't know at this point that we know what a best way is. We are so new into these partnerships. And the world is changing so fast, what's the best today may be outdated a year from now. Um, I, do think, I do think it's very relational. I mean, I, I got to know the, the director of the United Nations Foundation who was working in the area of, of malaria. Um, Bishop Boney and I were in the same covenant group in the Council of Bishops. So, I mean, those kinds of relationships were the seed that then we begin to build on. Um, but I don't know at this point that I'd be ready to say there is a best way forward. Uh, I'd say be attentive to what God's already doing, where there's already activity going on in the world, um, and think about how we can line ourselves up with, with that. I think, I think one of the key roles of the bishops, bishop there is to cast the vision, um, to show what's possible, but also to show and sometimes help create the pathways, the avenues, so that people can move from where they are, um, whatever small church they're in or whatever big church they're in, toward the vision. So to offer a vision without a mechanism to be able to accomplish the vision is really not all that helpful, it seems. So sometimes, more frequently I'm in the, let me tell you about this wonderful opportunity role, but behind the scenes, I'm often involved in, and I think other bishops are too, um, what are the mechanisms it takes to make this happen? Um, I might not do the mechanisms, but I might be helping to envision those um, so that people can have a way to access uh, the vision.